So I mean, my story starts off over uh, in Grenada in the Caribbean. And I, I remember most of significant events since I was like probably three years old, but I probably start off around the age of eight, you know. My dad, uh, I remember him leaving the island and leaving me with just two goats, right? And by the time I was around 10, you know, I actually had uh, about 12 goats, sheep, dogs, rabbits, and all this kind of stuff. But a big event also happened in 1979 over in Grenada, which, which was the born of the revolution. And while that, that, that didn't impact me that much, but by the time I was 12 years old, I found myself involved uh, in the military, you know, involved in the military. So very much from a very young age, I was involved in the military. But one of the things I really learned about uh, the military and for my early life as a scout is something called discipline. And I think that discipline really lived with me and probably made me who I am today. The revolution only lasted four years. So by 1983, it was all done. Many people might have heard of the, the famous American invasion of Grenada. <laughs> I was actually live. I was there, you know what I mean? I was actually involved to some extent. And this is kind of sad story what happened to the leader, but um, I wouldn't go into that today. But what I will say is that after the revolution finished, I focused my, 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 my life, I focused my intentions on becoming uh, a very highly educated. Some, something I learned from the, from the revolution, but also we were very poor people. I came from a very, very humble background. We were very poor. We never even had enough food to eat. And even the house that we lived in, when the rain come, we used to get wet inside, literally get wet inside. We used to have to put buckets to catch water inside the house. My mom as a nurse, she used to take food from the hospital to feed us, you know, it was really tough. And I realized that education uh, is a pathway to uh, liberating yourself from, if you want to call it, poverty. But more importantly, I think what I've done is a, is a challenge the assumptions and the expectations of what I was capable of achieving. And I really pushed myself and I became the valedictorian of my, my year, my school. I went on to college. Uh, to do a few A-levels, and I was also doing quite well. And with that good education, that good background, I actually started mentoring and coaching some people even in my second year in college. And then I got a job uh, on the Grand Dance Beach, you know, which is very nice in Grenada, on the Grand Dance Beach. My first job, you know, uh, in finance, I had to learn all the different aspects of finance. But, you know, ambition. Ambition is something that can be good, and it can be bad if you don't have a plan. So what actually happened is that I decided to go to find my dad, you know. We were exchanging messages. I never really knew the man. You know, I said he left me when I was eight years old. I never really remember anything of like him, what he was like physically. In those days, we just sent letters, you know. <laughs> so I decided to save some money up and go to Canada to find him. But I didn't really have a plan. I didn't have a plan. So I went to Canada to find my dad through a friend of mine's and i actually found my dad you know i found him i actually hunted him out i found him and i went to his house and he took half an hour before he came out to meet me and you know my dad never gave me anything you know he, he was really sad you know he said to me I, I told you don't come so i was left depressed you know i went into depression i actually got in trouble with uh the uh the, uh, the law in canada and literally, uh, I was back in Grenada uh, within a few years' time. So you find me now back in Grenada in 1993, depressed, broken. Matter of fact, I was actually um, deported from Canada, to put it quite politely. And it, it left me really heartbroken. Um, um, and I remember looking outside, looking outside our window and um, hungry as well, hungry, nothing to eat. And I realized, ah, you know what happened? Let, let me go to the bush and dig a yam. So I dig a bush yam from the bush. That inspired me, you know, it showed me actually, look, ha, huh, I can actually farm the land because, you know, we, we are from a farming family. So I turned my hand to farming. And I farmed three acres of land with two guys. And many, to many, to, to many um, um, words, actually, that's where my real business career started. 
you know, it started back then in probably around 1994, a long time ago. But what I did is that I farmed the land. I, I, I then I made a lot of crops. I went to the market and um, I sold my crops mainly to what is called huskers on a wholesale basis. And I took the money I got from the land. I bought food that we didn't have. And I also started to enhance uh, my mom's property. And um, then I eventually, uh, I actually got a job as well in another hotel. And you know, once in the hotel, I realized that, um, yeah, I'm doing okay, but hey, the, the chief accountant, you know, she's from England, her name is Caroline Davis. She was like, wow, she's doing exceptionally well, you know? She's got the benefits, she's got the, you know, a room in the hotel, she got a house. I'm like, wow. And that's because she was the chief accountant. So I realized, you know what happened? I want to become a chief accountant. <laughs> So I actually started uh, a studying. Um, I remember going to a firm. I got all the papers assigned up. I started studying. And that was the birth of me, like, starting to become an accountant. And I ended up becoming a CFO for a, a, a small bakery back there. And, and yeah, life was good. I was ambitious. And i like, you know what happened? These exams are so hard. You know, I want to crack it. I want to do it. I had options of going to Trinidad to do it. But for some reason, um, one of my teachers back in secondary school, he told me that England is a good place, you know. He told me that England is a place that people like me who do both business and science can go to a polytechnic. I didn't have a clue what that was, but he explained to me that there were polytechnics, you know, like, I don't know, in Oxford or in these places, you know. Um, So... I, just, I endeavored to come to England. I didn't know anyone here. I didn't know, literally did not know anyone. I tried to join the Navy. I, I, I applied for scholarship. I actually got a scholarship to Cambridge, but my grades was not good enough. I really, I really tried. I really tried. And it was a friend of a friend, one person who I knew here at the time. She said to me, if I got some money together, And I came as a student, she will help me. So that's exactly what I did. And uh, I I decided to come and study to become an accountant. And in 1997, June 1997, I was on my way to the UK. Um, I'm telling you something. Coming to the UK was, was good to come to the UK, but it was really tough because I found that it was even not colder than Canada, but damper than Canada. I cried. I, I wanted to go back. I was like, no, no, I can't take it. It's like, although I lived in Canada, for some reason, the UK was so tough for me. I was like, and it's like, man, people here, I guess it's all inside. I felt depressed. I was in a small room. Uh, I don't know. Because my life back in Grenada was starting to look very colorful, you know, just before I, um, I, I sort of embarked it for England. I got depressed again, to be quite honest. Even though I was studying, it was really tough. I um, started doing a bit of drinking. But I picked myself up. I pushed through my exams. Uh, by the way, my first job paid me 3 pounds 30 an hour. I think if they could have paid me less, they would have paid me less. <laughs> that, was the min- that was the minimum wage at the time. And anyway, to make a, a, a long story short, but, 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 but precise and, and factful, I finished all my exams but I really struggled to find a job. I went to 50 employment agencies, 50, sometimes four at a time, just to get an interview. They're like, sorry, man, you know, no experience in the UK. Sorry, man, no experience in the UK, you know? I was already an accountant back home before I came here. I actually used to teach, by the way. One thing thing I missed out is that when when I I, um, finished, while doing my farming back home, I started lecturing in evening classes. One of my mentors um, helped me. And so, yes, I was looking for an entry job. One thing I want to say, right, for my story, what led me to always going for more, I think, is people in the community, mentors, I call them, people who were doing well. And they always said to me, go for more, you know? For example, like when I finished secondary school, I could have actually got, get a, actually got a job. I got a job. But one of my mentors, he said to me, why take a job? You, you know, you're so you know, you have the, 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 the ability to do better. Don't settle for a job now, go to college. I haven't got the money. 
So I used to do landscaping jobs in the evening time, you know. So I know what it's like to hustle. I know what it's like to grind. And when I came to the UK and I was looking for a accountancy job, although I was qualified, I still had the hustler mentality. I was going to agencies. I was going to agencies. I was, and eventually, you know, I remember uh, one day um, I was exercising on the treadmill and I got a phone, I put my, I put my CV on the internet and I got a phone call and it started going on for very long. It's like, hey, I mean, I'm, I'm on this call for two hours. I didn't even know what, what to be headhunted meant, but I was actually headhunted um, um, for a company in the city, you know? And I started off my career uh, on Fenchurch Street. I was like, wow, 82 to 84 Fenchurch Street. I remember like yesterday, an insurance company. I was like, wow, I am actually on the Monopoly board now, you know? <laughs> I am actually on the Monopoly board. And I was like, I actually started approaching my whole life as plain monopoly so literally um i started working in 2001 um by 2002 i bought my first property yeah literally and um since then you know um my, my career went on i spent the last um 19 years after that working in financial services across insurance, like people like Aviva, Lloyds Banking Group, Chosa, I understand London market. I also work in asset management for Aviva investors. I also work in um, for Lloyds Banking Group, um, State Street. I work for some big names as well. And in the last 10 years, what I've done, on the side of building my property portfolio, on the side of working in the city, I've also set up what is called my accountancy firm. Yeah, it's rack max. I've had different companies before that. For example, I've set up Integ Integritas before, I-N-T-G-R-A-T-E-S with a friend, but he didn't have the guts to leave his job, you know, to, to, to do the company. Even though we had a, um, we actually had <laughs> someone who wanted to, who was paying us 5,000 a month part-time and um, we had people want to work with us for free. And I realized that in life, fear, fear can keep a lot of people back from doing stuff. And he, he didn't have that. I mean, I had the self-belief. I had the vision. Um, I think he just had the aspiration, but he let fear um, kept him back. So yes, you're right. Um, I said different companies, a couple of companies before. If people search my name, they will see I had many different companies, risk and controls, advisory services. But Rackmax, I actually set up properly from 2000 and uh, around four, so six years ago. But I've been in business in the UK as an accountant, helping people for the last 10 years. And today, yes, today, um, the last seven months or so, or not last nine months, I've completely left the city. And now all I do is I work with um, business owners, entrepreneurs, people who um, have a bit of money and they want to do a business. But more importantly, people who are committed, people who are hungry, for more, you know, I inspire people, I work with people, I share my story with them like I did today, but I also have the capabilities, I have the knowledge. Um, oh, by the way, I also did an MBA as well. Um, I've done a lot of studies in the last 20 years, a lot of studies. I've studied IT, I've studied project management, and today I'm really in a position where I can empower people, you know, I have my own blueprint as well which I use to show people how to grow a business and how to become highly um, profitable. And that's kind of summarize the summary of my story. But yeah, and basically, ev eventually now, I'm, I'm in a position now whereby I have a property portfolio that can give me income that um, even if I don't work, I can still make money. And then my 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 vision right now, which actually what I'm doing right now, I'm setting up something called the Online Academy. Yeah, I'm, I'm setting up something called the FBI Academy, Finance, Business and Investing Academy. Also, last year, also I actually wrote a book last year, and that book is called um, Money Management for Entrepreneurs and Business Owners. That book is on Amazon. Um, I plan to write a next book this year. I've already gone through halfway of it. It's going to be called The Journey. The Journey. Yeah, um, which is obviously kind of my journey, but I think it's going to be called something like, you know, the seven dimensions of building wealth, which will cover things like, you know, um, you know, social, you know, um, you know, environmental, physical, spiritual, um, that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, so look, my life right now is about giving back. 
giving back, giving back to people, giving back to society. Um, I also spend lots of my time now, as I said, doing events. Last year, I started to do some events as well. Focus on entrepreneurs, business owners, people who, it doesn't matter where you are, because I've, I've, I've helped people who have gone from, say, being an, an electrician with just himself and some two men to having a team of people and six, seven vans, having three, four properties. I've helped people, I'm, I'm helping people now who have a good business, but they want um, um, accountability. I'm helping people who wants to just do a completely new business. Um, I'm helping people who are right now, I'm helping a lady, her turnover is already half a million and she wants to go to 2 million. I've also saved the business as well. That was already making 1.5 million, but he, the owner didn't have any knowledge of finance. And one of his directors colluded, colluded with the accountant and robbed him a hundred grand. I've, I've saved that business as well. So look, overall, I'm in a position where I'm in a good position now where I'm not worried about money. Um, and also where I'm in a position where I can really help and inspire people and I can really give them the tools, the strategies, systems, and the capabilities to take not just their business to the next level, but their mindset, their vision to the next level. Now, obviously, my email is simple. It's Roy at Rackmax, R-A-C-M-A-C-S dot com. That's my email. My website is www.rackmax.com, R-A-C-M-A-C-S dot com. Um, um, or you can find me. I have a second website as well. But that's basically the, 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 are the two best places. LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a very, very good place. You can find me on LinkedIn, Royston Andrew Cumberbatch. You can find me on Facebook, Royston Andrew Cumberbatch. You can also find me on Instagram, Royston Cumberbatch. Or even I have a, I have a account called Money Management Education as well on, um, on LinkedIn. So yeah, so I, I've got two businesses, which is Money Management Education and Rackmax, you know. Um, R-E-C-M-E-C-S and I'm also doing some personal branding as well where I have some domains and some websites out there as well in my own name Royston Cumberbatch but look I'm available to speak to people I'm available to help people it's what I do it's what I love doing and yeah I'm, I'm, I would love to hear from some people who want some help and some free advice as well